Hey, good afternoon. Welcome to video number four. This video is going to be about my treatments for throat cancer. And all of them, as usual, are based on my specific condition. Your condition, treatment effects, and experience may be radically different than mine. My treatment was approximately two months of a combination of chemo and radiation therapy. The chemotherapy, which is basically poisoning, was seven treatments, one treatment per week for seven weeks. My radiation, which is burning out the cancer cells, is 35 treatments, which is five times a week for seven weeks. So everything occurred almost for two complete months. For chemotherapy, um, I had always heard rumors that chemo was bad. It would make you very sick, nauseous, dizzy, etc. And I guess this depends on the type of chemo you have and the frequency of your treatment. I can only talk about what I experienced. And as always, I'd love to hear about your experiences in the comments below. Maybe yours was a little bit different. Maybe the chemo was a little worse for you than it was for me. But I'd love to hear about what your experience was. I felt that chemo was the easier of the two types of treatment that I received. Chemotherapy may be given in a couple different ways. IV, oral, subcutaneous, intramuscular, etc. Mine was intravenous, the IV. And as I lost weight and became dehydrated, it became harder and harder to get the catheter into the veins in various locations. Not only were the veins getting smaller, the application of the catheter started to become painful. The locations where the catheters were inserted were the back of the hand, the forearm, the wrist, and of course the bend of the elbow. Um, I always found chemo day always to be a little bit difficult because it was a three to four hour day in a chemo room followed by the radiation treatment. My chemo treatments involved laying in a hospital bed, reading, sleeping, watching TV, and while the chem chemicals were flowing into me, and then they got flushed out via the IV. When I had the radiation treatment, I always found that was to be a little bit worse, or a lot worse, actually. Although it only took 10 to 30 minutes at a time, the cumulative effect, or the buildup, caused the most pain in my overall decline, physical, mental and emotional. Now during the treatment you may need a mask. The mask is there during a targeted treatment to make sure that radiation affects exactly the, the spots that are needing it, where the cancer is. Without the mask you're probably going to, you would move your head and the treatment would be less efficient. Now the shaping of the mask before the treatment started was a little bit scary itself but the radiotherapists were very professional. They had a good sense of humor which helped a lot. While we are here let's go ahead and talk about that. A good healthy sense of humor is key not only during radiation or chemo but during the whole process. It makes everything much easier and fast and go quicker as well. Helps everybody who's involved in your treatment and healing. You know, I was always telling the ladies that were the radiotherapist that my, I wanted to walk in the door and make them laugh at least once when I got there, sometimes twice if I could. It wasn't always possible. Some days I just wasn't in it, into it, or some, just couldn't come up with something funny, or I just didn't feel very good. But those are the days they would turn around and try to find something to make me laugh. So they were very, very good at what they did. And I, very, I really appreciated what they were doing. Okay, so now we're going to talk about wearing the mask. What was that like? So I've been talking about this mask thing. And this is it. This is the mask. So basically, this slides on top of your head. And as you can see, it goes over the face, the shoulders, and it pretty much holds you very stiff and fixed into place. Using these knobs, they lock the mask down into the table, and that holds you very still. Um, you can't move around in it. Uh, when we first put the mask on, uh, when we're first forming the mask, they take it and they lock it in very tightly around your face, and it's warm like warm plastic and then they mold it around your face so it fits and that was the most disturbing part because i wasn't sure what to expect i couldn't find anything on the internet about the mask i saw pictures but nobody really talked about how do you get this thing what happens so i'm going to tell you it's claustrophobic well to me it was they pushed it on there it's very 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 tight when they clipped it into place when they formed it in i couldn't open my eyes i couldn't open my mouth and it was very disconcerting. I felt like if I could open my eyes, I'd be okay. But with my eyes, there was enough pressure on them, I couldn't open my eyes. So I asked the nurses, I said, hey, can we take a break for a few minutes? Now that it's set, can we take a break for a few minutes? Let me take the mask off, let me sit up for a second. And they're like, nope, only 10 more minutes. Just give me 10 minutes, I promise you will be finished. 
You can take it off and you can walk out the door. Several deep breaths. We did the 10 minutes and it was finished. Like I said, it was claustrophobic, but I got used to the mask. And at the end, I was used to wearing it. Um, got to where I could open my eyes as I lost weight. As a matter of fact, I ended up with two different masks due to the weight loss. Physically, it became increasingly difficult to eat or drink. What worked one day or one week wouldn't work out the following. I could feel it happening day after day. One day I could eat a hamburger, and the next day I couldn't eat any of it. Uh, one day I could eat Chinese noodles, which became kind of a mainstay for a few days, and then all of a sudden I couldn't eat those either. It became very difficult to swallow. It became painful. And as we got towards the middle of it, simply swallowing saliva started to become difficult. So despite my strong desire to eat normal food, it got to the point I was just physically unable to eat or drink anything through my mouth. Everything was having to start to go through the tube. And this is the point when I should have been using the stomach tube regularly, but I wasn't. A little bit about the stomach and the peg tube. This is the point that being stubborn and hard-headed led to what could have been a very dangerous situation. And the bad part about it was is, well, I put myself into that situation. I didn't want to be that weak person using the peg. My body is trying to work with this and I'm not giving it the tools to work with by simply starving myself because I was being hard-headed and stubborn. Don't do it. Get the peg tube, which again, I'm gonna put out another video strictly on the peg because I really think that's gonna be important. I went, on home, went home from there and started using the peg tube like I should have been doing at the beginning. My wife was perfect because again, she's not sitting there going, I told you so. She may have done that once or twice. <laughs> By the time I had reached week six and seven of my treatments, talking became difficult and painful. Eating and drinking normally was out of the question. Needless to say, everything from my throat to the back of my tongue and in my mouth, my teeth, everything, something hurt. Every day it was something. And during the last week, week seven, I'd started to develop a lot of mucus buildup in the back of my throat. Now, usually when you have a mucus buildup, it sounds gross, but you swallow, right? I couldn't do that. Uh, still have to drink a lot of water. I was unable to swallow. So the mucus would build up substantially and it would build up substantially enough to trigger a gag reflex. And since there's nothing in my stomach to vomit because, well, I'm drinking meal replacement shakes, um, vomiting is out of the question, but dry heaving wasn't. Now I do remember during the last several radiation se sessions, I had told the radiotherapist to be watching carefully that once I got locked into the, locked into the machine, they had about 10 minutes of me laying on my back before I was gonna begin gagging, dry heaving, etc. As we finished the treatments, I remember the oncologist had told me that two weeks following the last treatment would be the most difficult. He was right. Um, I'm not sure I actually believed him. Actually, I'm pretty sure I didn't believe him when he said that. I mean, how could that possibly be right? You finish the treatments, right? You're up here, everything, uh, all the bad stuff's happened here. You finish, it should be the downhill slope, right? Finishing everything up, but it didn't. He was absolutely correct. I guess that the guy's been doing it for 40 years, I should probably listen to him. Although the treatments had ended, it felt like they were not only continuing, but like they were even getting worse. It was, and the burning in the back of my throat, it felt like somebody had slashed the back of my tongue with a knife. I felt like somebody, every time I just swallowing saliva or talking or something, it felt like that there was a, just a spot, the size of my thumbnail on the back of my throat on the left side that somebody was just digging into it with an ice pick so yeah he was right it got worse and it was only about two two and a half three weeks later that i felt like i was actually starting to recover that i felt like the pain was slowly starting to diminish we'll save that for another video this is what happened with me this is what i experienced during the treatment your experience with treatment may have been totally different I'd love to hear about it because the more we can talk about this, then the more somebody reads this or watches this, hears this, and finds out that, hey man, it's, it's all survivable, because it is, no matter how bad it hurt. And I remember telling my wife over and over, I just want it to stop. I just want to drink a sip of water. I just want to eat a spoonful of soup. And it just wasn't gonna happen right now. There is no magic bullet. You, Time is the only thing you've got, and it heals.
and as it healed it does get better hopefully you guys will be watching this and you'll realize that there is an end to it and we all will get better anyway have a great day hit that subscribe button hit the like button put something in the comments let me know how you think how you went how your treatment went or if there's any way i can help you of course get in touch with me have a great day we'll talk to you later see you next week mm -hmm.